Pilates, and this input is on knee replacement. Knee, uh, knee replacement. Knee replacement. Yeah, we've done a hip one. Okay. Can't get the staff away. Let me just kneel down on this, my poor little knees. So with knee replacement, well, let's look at a few things. Let's say someone is due to go into for knee replacement. They've usually, if they listen to the consultant, been advised to strengthen the musculature around the knee. Now, usually physios, they'll use, and a lot of people, they just bang on about the quad, quadricep muscle group, four muscles, obviously quadricep. Um, they usually neg negate or neglect the hamstring muscle group, which crosses over the knee joint, big stabilizer of the knee, and the gastrocnemius in particular. It's two massive tendons here crosses over, and that helps stabilize the knee as well. It's not just everyone bangs on about the quadriceps, it's not just that, it's the hamstrings and the calf. So for working on something that's going surgery, and this also includes for post-surgery as well. But they usually advise to strengthen it up. So you're looking at strength movement muscles. Anything where you're using those muscles uh, and strengthening the muscles. I'm not going to go on specific exercises for that. This particular video really is dealing with something called proprioception. And it's more for, it's, it is for post-surgery or post-surgery or post-injury knee. It actually, this particular one we're going to do is works on ankle, knee and hip. But I'm doing it mainly for the knee. So post-surgery... With all muscles, we're after strong muscles, but flexible muscles. Let's exaggerate it. Let's say that knee there, Tanya's, that's okay. She's had knee replacement. What you usually find is, the, and it depends on how far post-surgery you are. A lot of that will depend on what the consultant says. Rather than an arbitrary three months after knee replacement, you can do X, Y, Z. Go by what the consultant says, because it depends on what technique they've used, what cement, whatever the hell, surgery, how it's being done. Uh, and any problems they might have encountered that the client might have as well. So a lot of that is you go by what the consultant has said, their consultant has said. So slightly off tangent, but very relevant is you'll usually find from an insurance point of view, they'll need something in writing saying they can do X, Y, Z. Usually they'll be given a sheet from the physio showing them some exercises. Uh, and unless you're qualified to go beyond that, stick to what they, the, the type of movements that they've given to do. So as a general rule, they usually lack mobility in the knee. They want to get more mobility in that joint. And also something called proprioception, spatial awareness, is affected. Whenever you have an injury to any joint, it's like you've a, a, a bit of an exaggeration to say you've got to learn to walk again. But the joint is always sending information back to the brain. Once you have an injury or surgery there, it needs re-educating. That's all. Now, let's talk about range of motion first. A huge chunk of it, as with anyone that's been in pain, is apprehension. So let's say for argument's sake, they can actually, let's say you've had knee replacement here, and they go, oh, that's as far as they can go. You usually find that they can take it a little bit. It's them being apprehensive because they're so much used to pain in that joint. So what you're trying to do is build up confidence in them and take everything that needs to be pain-free, but not discomfort-free. And what you're aiming to do is increase the range of motion, and that's work on the proprioception. So, range of motion, so this, one of the simplest moves is, I'm just really gonna just focus today on leg slides and knee folds. So leg slides, you're just gonna, now what you go to for a gunny feather is, always go to the weakest knee, the more problematic knee. So although this one can go in here, you wouldn't have that one in there and that one there. Have them both the same, I would advise you. And then just alternate doing leg slides, I'm not going to go on about the nuances of the leg slides. If you want to do neutral pose, neutral spine, that's fine. And you just alternate, and you can then bring the knee in to your chest, like single leg. So bring it in, hug it into your knee, or hug it into your chest. Hands underneath, I would suggest for this one, rather than on the sheet. And variations where you lower it down, slide it along the floor. Variations where you can do it on a roller, you get a little bit more out of it. So anything really where you're working the knee, pain-free is the key. Pain-free, but not discomfort-free. So, there's loads of other things you can do standing as well. You can do stuff with their bands. I'm not, I'm not here to teach a specific exercise. You know a whole range of exercises you can do. You, a lot of the time, it's them getting over their apprehension. They may not, and probably won't, be able to get that knee anywhere near the other knee, assuming the other knee is okay, that is. Yeah, so let's assume that knee's okay. They may not be able to get full mobility there. Now, again, a lot of that will depend on what the consultant has said rather than what they've said. Because with certain surgeries and certain parts of the body, sometimes, uh, assume there's no issues and everything's gone flying swimmingly, usually it's a case of they should get full range of motion. 
in certain conditions, in certain um, certain issues and certain injuries, there's no earthly reason why they can't have the same range of motion. Now, with complete, there's different uh, knee replacement. With a complete one, they're probably not looking at getting the same range of motion. So there is going to be a limiting factor there, which is going to have a knock-on effect for the rest of the body. That's something that they'll have to manage. So, proprioception. I like to do this with knee folds, pro spatial awareness, basically. So, have your feet together. They can do this against the wall, or you can have... It works better, obviously, in one-to-one -one rather than the class. I have tried this in classes. It doesn't work too bad, actually. So maybe get a block there so the toes are just touching. And you just, I'm just going to hold it there for now. I just alternate doing knee folds. Now, the aim being, you want to land that foot down in exactly the same place you picked it up from. And just alternate with the other one. Now, in an ideal world, you'll do both sides, but maybe concentrate a little bit more on the problematic side. Purely, if you're certainly if it's working one-to-one, -one, I wouldn't be worried about this one. I'm just interested in that one, what that one's doing. And then, so what you can do, that's fine, yeah? And then you can alter it. Now slide your legs out. Slide your feet out so you're touching the block. And now try a few knee folds. And you can try different distances. And now the real skill of proprioception is... Super. I usually mark off on a floor. It doesn't work. Again, it works better one-to-one. -one. Usually mark off. Maybe on the mat you'll have an area or have a line. And then lift your leg up and put it back down exactly on that line. Super. And now... Um, and now we're over against the wall. I'll show you another one you can do. This better demonstrates what I was trying to do on the floor, to be honest with you. So you might mark off at different heights. Let's just stick it to three. I'm not going to actually mark on that wall. You can shout for that. So you might draw a line or have a line there. One, two, and three. And what the type of thing you'll do is lift your leg. Let's assume that's the line number one. Lift it up to there. Have a look at where it is. And now lower the leg down, the foot down, and then bring it back up to the same place. You can look. So do that a few times with them looking, seeing where it is. So they're getting, they're listening to the feedback from the ankle, the knee and the hip. So all three joints are affected here. Yeah? So they've got an idea, they hit it all the time. That's fine, that's good proprioception, spatial awareness. Now the challenge is, don't look at it, or maybe close your eyes. Now take it to one. And look how far away you was. Good. Oh, that's good. And then do it again. And then look how far away you were. Quite good. Now we're going to go down to two. Let's show, let's show practice first again with two. So look where it is first. Get used to that. So what this is working on, the feedback, while she's looking at it, she's getting the feedback, unconscious, from the hip, the knee, and the ankle joints. So it works on all three, this one. And again, so don't look, now get it to two, or whatever number is there. That's it, it's quite good, actually. And again, and you can do that, you can play around. And then you can just go to, let's say she's doing one, two, and three, that's a case of, take it to one, yeah? Lower down, take it to three. And just keep an old thing, once play, play the game with it. Then you can do a similar, what I was trying to demonstrate on the floor, which didn't do too well, is you can do the same sort of thing with sliding it. Slide down to one, slide down to two, slide down to three. Bring it back to one, bring it to three, bring it to two. And all that's a little bit of a game, but you're working on ankle, knee, and hip proprioception, spatial awareness. So anyone with any ankle issues, knee, and or hip issues, you're, doing this, you're killing three bears one stone, so it's off. You okay with that one? And that's one thing you can do in relation to. So with knees, pre-surgery, you're looking at strengthening them and post-surgery as well. Post-surgery, you're usually looking at trying to work out getting as much mobility as you can in the knee. Just have in mind, they will be very, very apprehensive and they won't want to, in a nutshell. Um, but, but no matter what you do, it's got to be pain-free, but not necessarily discomfort-free. And the other side of it isn't just about mobility, you still need to strengthen the muscles, um, but a lot of it is to do with proprioception as well. And a lot of it depends on your clients, is what's more relevant to them depends on who they are. So if they're a sports person, then proprioception. I mean, this goes for anyone, but probably more so in relation to sports people. The proprioception is to prevent them have, from your average person, or certainly most of our clients, to prevent them having falls or any issues with it. It's to get used to the joint and how it's reacting and the muscles. Um, I think that's covered. Cool. There's lo loads you can do. There's loads. You can do all sorts of other stuff as well when you're up there. You can send it out. You can bring it forward, bring it back. So, and again, same sort of thing. Different 
place it on the floor, take it to one, bring it back, take it to two, bring it back, take it to three, bring it back. And both legs. It's a good one to do both legs because they're working this one, get a bit of mobility there. So you still need strength, you still need flexibility. The biggest one post-surgery is something called proprioception, spatial awareness, getting them to, right, take it to that spot there. Take it to that spot there. And then try it without them looking, without them looking, and see if they still hit it. Uh, and that's basically it. That, that, that doesn't just go for knees, that goes for ankle, knee, hit, almost any joint, basically. Uh, but that's it for that section on knee replacements. Obviously there's partial replacements and full replacements, and a lot of it is being guided by what the consultant has said. And that's it. Kareem's got a bad on his knee. Who's yeah, Kareem? Under his wife. Oh, that's marvellous. That's very relevant to that. A proper Mackie knee. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Bye. Bye. <laughs>